Another way to address the shift in center of gravity is with a so-called cantilever design. A cantilever is a structural member, such as a beam, that projects beyond a fulcrum and is supported by a downward force beyond the fulcrum. So in the Scott bench curl, right here, your arms would be the beam, extending this way. The bench pad is the fulcrum. And your body weight would be the downward force on one side of the fulcrum. Since the weight in your hand is less than your body weight, it no longer disrupts your balance. Now, next to that is a Nautilus version. Um, but the cantilever concept, or the, or the Scott bench concept, has been used for just about every curl machine. But early versions of both the Scott bench curl and the machine curls had a flaw unrelated to the center of gravity issue. Since the barbell is such a common tool, we're tempted to use it on the Scott bench, and early machines mimic that same hand position of full supination. The problem with full supination is that the elbow doesn't bend at a right angle. The radius comes up higher on the upper arm than the ulna, so your hand moves towards the center in elbow flexion. This is called what the texts call the carrying angle. So now if your arms are over a fulcrum in full supination, the carrying angle wants to direct your hands towards your face. But if you're holding a straight bar or, or machine handles, your hands are fixed. The distance between your hands are fixed. They can't move towards your face. And since your elbows are now pushing down into the pad, you get about halfway up and then you stall. Because while the elbow and hands want to move this way, the machine won't let you. You end up working against your own joints. Now, intuitively, bodybuilders realize this wasn't working, so they switched to dumbbells or an easy curl bar. And the equipment designs went the same way. The reason this works is that the carrying angle disappears outside of full supination. Now, I'm fully aware that Nautilus lore dictates full supination to work the biceps, but that's not entirely the case. Remember that the biceps attaches on the inside of the radius. <clears throat> so if your hand is pronated or neutral, the force from the biceps is right, wrapped under the radius and has to unwrap it before it can pull straight up. As long as your hand is slightly more supinated than neutral, but short of full supination, the biceps will be the prime mover, and you won't run into the carrying angle issue. Here's, here's a recent design by Nautilus, and Hammer did something similar that addressed the center of gravity and the carrying angle issues. Okay, Here is the fulcrum for the cantilever. So your upper arm rests on here. Your heavier body weight sits, and here's the handles that you pull. And these axes for the mo movement arms aren't in line, and they're angled to accommodate the carrying angle. Here are the most recent designs I've seen that address these issues. You've got independent axes to address the carrying angle. You've got a small cantilever effect. You have a pad here for your upper arm to rest against. And you've got a much broader base, so I have a more stable center of gravity which of course now brings these curl machines up to the level of sophistication of this uh, dusty exercise. The classic incline curl. You have a broad base, so the weights don't affect your center of gravity. You're already leaning back, so the muscles around your spine are, aren't involved. You can supinate more than neutral, but avoid the carrying angle. And the sticking point matches the joint angle for peak muscle torque, especially if you don't lock out. One more thing, the head position, neck flexion, triggers the tonic neck reflex, which according to the text facilitates pulling contractions. Which curl you do primarily depends on which joints you need to protect or you can protect all your joints and do an incline curl or the machine version. In spite of the fitness cliches, 
Your choice of curl will have no effect on selectively shaping your biceps nor strengthening one joint angle over another. Muscle torque exists in a predictable documented pattern which, is ex which explains why your same biceps has to use different weights for different curls. You're simply loading a different point on the muscle torque curve. And if you look at biceps from the Arnold era, where each of the top guys had a different shaped biceps, Arnold versus Franco versus Bill Grant versus Frank Zane versus Boyer Coe and so on, they all did the same exercises. So if shape was malleable, they should have ended up with the same looking biceps and they obviously didn't. The one thing that will affect the shape of your biceps is to rupture one head off the scapula and not repair it. The biceps will then shrink down, reattach randomly, and just sit somewhere in your upper arm. Here's a look at my own biceps from 1996, two years before I ruptured it. And here it is now, about 11 years after rupturing it and not repairing it. And you can see a divot. Not a recommended strategy. Stick with the incline curls.